Yo, what is up, YouTube? Uh, Redbird here, talking about the daily grind in Throne of Liberty. I get this question a lot. What does Throne of Liberty look like at Endgame? What are the activities that I'm going to be doing on a regular basis? This is kind of going to sum all that up uh, in one easy, hopefully to understand video to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like uh, when global hits uh, as like daily progression in the game. The first basic thing you'll be doing are these contracts. They're called resistance contracts. Uh, these uh, vendors are, are all over um, the world of Throne and Liberty, but there are only a few end game spots. I, I have a video that I made a couple days ago about my favorite uh, place to run these resistance contracts. Uh, it takes like, if you're doing it on a daily basis, it takes like maybe 10 to 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. So every day you will get 10 of the contract rights. Those build up over time. You can get up to 60 banked, but, but daily you will get 10. So again, like you'll just go through here, uh, select, um, you know, these, uh, these, uh, contracts, whichever ones you want to complete. Uh, I typically just pick on which ones are their fastest. I don't like to spend a ton of time here. I just kind of like to get them done make sure I'm not losing out on the, um, rewards. Um, but yeah. 10 to 15 minutes tops you'll get 10 of these a day so if you're playing the game like if you're logging in for a couple hours every day you're gonna be able to knock these out easily in like 15 minutes uh and then that'll be that for uh these you get these 10 10 a day okay resistance contracts here dimensional contract tokens these are your rights to get drops inside of dungeons or the co-op dungeons um so these uh dim these dimensional contract tokens ensure that when you do the dungeon you get drops from the boss uh, at the end of the dungeon and and these recharge at 900 now we, we're not sure at global if it's going to be tier one or tier two dungeons that are available probably most likely just tier one but we're not sure yet uh the tier one dungeons they cost 300 to get your drops in and then the tier two costs 450. So you're either going to be able to run three tier one dungeons or two tier two dungeons a day. And that's if you're playing every day. These do bank. You can accumulate up to 4,500 of these, um, which will, uh, again, be like five days of dungeon running. So if you miss a weekend or you miss a couple of days here or there, it's fine. You're not going to lose out on progression. You can always make that up on the next day. So we have resistant contracts. You're going to get 10 of those a day, probably 10 to 15 minutes tops um these dimensional contract tokens for the dungeon drops the the dungeons and throne and liberty once they're pretty straightforward but i mean they're very well designed the, the boss fights are fun and and uh i, I don't want to diminish that but but they're quick like if you if you're good everybody knows what they're doing you can get these done in like 10 to 15 minutes per dungeon so you're looking at, at what like 30 45 minutes in these dungeons grinding um tops a day so uh again 10 to 15 20 minutes maybe on the on the the uh resistant contracts 40 to an hour tops on the on the dimension so you're looking at about an hour and 20 minute commitment max uh for these activities and these recharge daily okay now the rewards in, in both of these uh in these activities um and and some other things uh such as uh the newly um put in the amatoire uh venture system you get these uh, rewards uh, that are abyssal contract tokens. These are how you get drops in the open world dungeons, um, such as uh, the Shadowed Crypt. Um, you have uh, Silicis here. Uh, there's a few other ones as well. These will let you get drops inside of these open world dungeons. Now you can do get these in a lot of different ways. Like I, like I was saying, um and and these basically do not you don't get these daily these are basically just rewards from resistance contracts um you get them from the amatoire missions as well and and uh you basically once you get done with your uh resistance contracts and um your dimensional contracts <clears throat> you can go into the open world dungeons they have very good like some of these drop tier two items as well you can go in there and farm them as well these, is, if you get in a group of six, they go really fast. Um, so the drops, I mean, again, you can farm these out really quickly as well. Not a huge time commitment. Now, once a week, uh, you will get to go to the vendors um, all over uh, Throne and Liberty and pick up these allied resistant force contracts. 
um they can be obtained through the reward bags as well uh in the game i think i have one to show you um that i didn't open i i, I don't have them but they, they come in these like these little bags let me see if i can show you real quick um sometimes there are rewards uh from these nope they didn't spawn one so uh but anyways the the, the bags can also roll these blue contracts but most of the time you're going to come to these sundry merchants and you'll have to visit a couple of different sundry merchants to get all of them but you can see uh they just refreshed this week uh these are contracts these are basically like in-game uh contracts for the open world dungeon mobs so even if you don't have these credits you can go into the open world dungeons complete these contracts and i mean these actually this will show you uh one of the rewards let me show you these are the bags that i'm talking about there's other versions of these bags that carry these contracts in them as well that you'll see in the resistant contract uh, vendor or the resistant contract menu. So uh, these are, again, you get six for each open world dungeon each week. So 24 total. Um, I just casually go in there, complete these contracts. You will end up spending your abyssal contract tokens by default because you'll just be grinding in there grinding mobs killing mobs with your group these don't take much long at all i would say these are the this is the most like time consuming thing to do it in game uh for the most part but you only do them once a week so you only have to run 24 once a week you can you can have five active quests at a time so uh i mean they go relatively quickly you just have to visit each um each of the four in game dungeons which is Shadow Crypt, Silicis Abyss, Sanctum of Desire, and then uh, Soradoma's Island. So there's the four. The, the, the one that's going to be tricky for you to get into is, uh, is Sanctum of Desire. It only opens when it's raining, so you kind of have to be a pay attention and get your contracts done whenever that opens up. Um, just a reminder, these open world dungeons do turn into PvP at night. So be aware that if you're in there completing your contracts and you're in there at night, you're going to get locked into most of these and then uh, all heck breaks loose in PvP. It's a ton of fun if you like it, but if you're trying to get work done, if you can only level in, uh, log in occasionally, and, and uh, you'll just have to be aware that that's PvP may interact with you getting these done. Um, so these are the, the, the three main like activities, I would say, that you kind of got to keep on top of for progression. And throne of liberty you're looking at like two hours a day maybe three if you're trying to complete all of your contracts um your um contracts for your open world dungeons um they're they're called allied resistant force contracts um you could probably easily get them done uh in the extra hour every day so two to three hours logged in each day you're going to be keeping up with most people uh because these are the most rewarding things that you can do at end game in throne of liberty now um as far as like the activities go on a daily basis it, it, throne of liberty does a really good job about keeping things interesting throughout the day if you look at this this calendar here there's activities to do almost every hour now they've recently nerfed the rewards from these activities unfortunately and 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 uh, oftentimes it's not necessarily very rewarding to place these in charge uh, like place these ahead of the things that i spoke about before this but if you are someone who's logging in every day two to three hours a day you want to play more than that uh, maybe you like to you know you like to play three four five six hours a day well once you once you have all those things done you'll be looking at the calendar doing these rewards competing trying to rank uh, the higher the rank you get in each of these open world activities the better rewards you're going to get some of these are boss drops some of these are open world raid bosses um some of these are pvp events i mean it includes all kinds of things for players to do i think it's a great system to like keep people logging in and, and keep playing the game even after they've done their like daily stuff um this is unlimited rewards each act to each of these different um events have their own reward system so you can you know if you do are again are done with your stuff you can come here and even get more progression as you go now again it's kind of mixed i, I think it's good that they don't weight these in too heavily to make people feel like they got to log in every hour 
uh, but it is something for you to do once you've done your other stuff. Obviously, there's open world PvP. Um, there are arenas in the game, which are currently not very rewarding, but um, they're getting better. Um, they're, they're working on the reward system for this and, and to make it more competitive for players. Um, so, I mean, as that, as, uh, the game progresses, we'll, I think, see arenas to be more of a viable option to, to, uh, spend your time in. And then there's also, uh, the new dungeon, uh, or the new dungeons that they recently added, which are, uh, I'm not, it's not showing right now for some reason. Oh, here we go. Sorry. This is the, uh, this is like the, like, mythic system of Throne and Liberty. Now, the main rewards here uh, in these are, are runes. And these runes are, are a little bit grindy. This is more like of an in-game thing once you've got all your, you know, your traits and everything like that knocked out on your gear. Um, you know, the, the power level required to compete in these, especially as you go up uh, higher tiered. Uh, the, the, the minimum combat level goes up and the rewards obviously go up as well. Uh, these are for grinding runes. This is something that, again, um, you're going to want to do the other things I spoke about first, because those are how you're going to trade out your gear. These are how you're going to get all the growth stones to level up your armor. Those are how, uh, you're going to, um, you know, get to the point where you get your trait resonance, which is an extra trait on all your gear. It's very, very important to, to get all that stuff done and prioritize that stuff as you progress first, um, as well. And I can do another video on progression. Just let me know, uh, about that. If you want to see that. Uh, leave a comment down below. Um, but yeah, this is basically it in Throne and Liberty on a regular basis. Obviously, there's like Siege as well, but that doesn't happen very often at all. Uh, so, you know, that's not that's something you can plan on logging in. It's like once a month, I think, or, or even less frequently than that. So it's not something that's going to impact your daily grind in Throne and Liberty. So for the most part, for most casual players, I think you're going to be able to easily keep up to in Throne and Liberty. And like maybe like two to three hours logged in every day. If you miss a couple days, no big deal. You just come back and play like four or five hours over the weekend or something. You're going to be caught. You're going to keep up with most of the players that aren't like swiping insane amounts of money with a credit card or, uh, you know, just, just in general, like the, the, the real grinders that can play eight, nine, 10 hours a day. They're not going to get much benefit of doing that over you if you can keep up with those daily activities that that, uh, that i'm talking about um for the most part i mean like 90 to 95 percent of the players um if you're keeping up with your dailies you're going to be pretty close with i think uh let me know if this is helpful uh, i know i got a lot of questions about this um on twitch i stream over there monday wednesday fridays right now um twitch.v slash redboard redbird check out studioloot.com uh, for all Thrones and Liberty guys, we're, we've been up and those daily. Um, we're getting, we're getting close to having the builds done. Um, so keep an eye over there and yeah, thanks for watching guys. Again, let me know if this is helpful in the comments. Let me know what you want to see next. I can't talk anymore, so I'm going to quit the video.